like, hey, let's get started, maybe. So uh, um, after these highly technical talks, uh, I wanted to look at the program, wanted to give you some uh, simple introduction into uh, actually how to start with LibreOffice. So uh, uh, that's me, and the title you actually can't see is LibreOffice uh, IDE Integration. Um, and I'm gonna uh, talk about a, a bit about the, the stuff we did to make it easier to build LibreOffice from an IDE uh, and to debug and do stuff there. And uh, to start that off, I'll just show you the uh, uh, how to build LibreOffice at all. Uh, who of you here uh, did a build of LibreOffice like in the last year? Okay, so there are quite a few people who don't know how to build LibreOffice, and um, so maybe we should quickly run through that. Um, you know the classic Unix style uh, uh, thing to build something, uh, it's configure, ma uh, make, make install, and uh, uh, if you ever try to build like the old open office thing, you know that it was quite different, but for LibreOffice by now, um, it's actually quite the same, configure and make. And you find here a link, and there you, there's actually a video that, that a five minute video with a uh, cool um, sound pack that shows you how easy it is uh, to get started with building LibreOffice. The only thing that is different if you build LibreOffice Master, which you should, is uh, that you use AlphaGen SH, which as the dot .sh uh, clearly tells you is a little Perl script, <coughs> which, um, which just does the whole uh, um, rerun autoconf uh, madness and stuff like that. But that's not different than any other uh, auto-tool project. So it's still pretty much uh, the same. So you just clone your repository, you uh, uh, configure and you make. And after that, actually, you don't have to do a make install because uh, LibreOffice is already in a runnable state on your disk at that point. What you can do is to make debug run, which actually runs your uh, just build LibreOffice uh, directly into GDB. And you can start right away debugging because, uh, well, um, if, if your LibreOffice crashes at some point, uh, because you did something uh, uh, which causes it to crash, you at least have a stack trace and do not have to do that again uh, with starting GDB. So uh, this is a very simple, uh, straightforward thing to do. And um, also this autogen, for example, does all uh, the other nifty things, like if you have Zcash installed, it uses it and uh, stuff like that. So this is how you build all of LibreOffice. Of course, um, w just building all of LibreOffice is not what you want to do usually, because you want to do changes and you, you want to rebuild something. So for example, so you have multiple parts of LibreOffice. There's a whole list of them. And for example, SW is uh, writer, the text processor. So you can do changes there and just rebuild uh, the writer module, which is make, make SW. And uh, the other way to do that is to you can go into that directory and make, uh, actually just make, not make SW, oops, uh, in there. Um, then you have test suites, which are uh, the three here. Uh, unit checks, which is the quick running tests that are run in every build. The slow checks, um, which are run, which are a bit slower, so we are not running them when you are just building, for example, the text processor. But if you're building the whole LibreOffice, which takes still some time, um, <coughs> then uh, we run them uh, with that. And the last one is the subsequent tests, which run, uh, which need a complete installation of LibreOffice. So you can't just test a, simp uh, a part of that. Um, yeah, then you have the uh, high-level make check target, which is also just like any of the other uh, auto tools project. So this is the um, uh, the way that you can build it, and then you have actually in this pro uh, in this directory into your program as office, you can just start it right away and uh, try things out from there. Of course, the alternative is to use the make make debug run, which runs uh, LibreOffice directly under the debugger. So this is um, the most of the command line tools. 
And we have uh, so all the uh, nifty things with debugging. You can create a whole build that has debug symbols with extra debugging code and so on and so on. Um, I'll just show that so that you can see that you can do all of that later in, uh, in the IDE too. So this is just to give you an overview. If you want to debug, you can use that. So how do we ge get to the uh, IE integration? Well, um, for that, we have a pretty, uh, we have a completely new build system. Uh, or well, not that new anymore, but we uh, have a consistent build system at least. We just use one build system, which is Numix, uh, all through the project. And if you ever saw, for example, CMake, you, you will see that actually it's pretty comparable. It's just the syntax is a bit different, but it shows you just that you, uh, you use libraries and you uh, want to have certain objects in that. And it's pretty abstract in the description of what you want to build. And because of that, you can, you can use this information and generate the uh, IDE project files for an IDE from that. And you do that once you have a complete build by issuing one of these commands. For example, uh, kdevelop IDE integration does this for kdevelop on uh, Linux. Uh, for Visual Studio, you have the same. Uh, there's an awesome uh, Vim IDE integration that Moggy did, who just left. I think, and um, so the Visual Studio um, at the integration was uh, also not done by me. It was done by a guy named uh, Honka, who I'll show the video later. Um, so you have on essentially on, on most platforms, you actually have an IDE that you can work with. Of course, you can extend that to other IDEs, so volunteers are welcome. So how do we do that from an IDE? Well, if you look, for example, at uh, kdevelop, this is uh, how it looks like. If you open, if you generate these project files and open that, you get um, these uh, targets that you can run. So you can run the local test, which is, for example, only the test for writer in this case. Um, so not the, uh, the test for the whole LibreOffice suite, but only the test for for writer, or you can run the global test, which uh, test, which means you want to run the tests all over the place and uh, uh, all, all tests everywhere, which is of course, for example, if you do something like uh, uh, the two presenters uh, who did stuff at, did present before me, like OpenGL stuff, you may, might want to check that actually uh, it works in all of the office and not only in one module where you have a specific target to test. And then the last thing you can do is, well, just run LibreOffice and um, from the IDE and start it there and try it out manually. The other thing that you can do is you can uh, debug, you can set breakpoints and all that stuff. All that uh, wasn't that easy before with the old build system and with the new build system. This is on Windows, and you see the link here, and uh, there's the video showing, this is actually a screenshot from the video, uh, how that works on Windows, but you can do the same with kdevelop uh, on Linux. So uh, on, on uh, most platforms, you can, you can just work with it. Okay. Finally, leftovers out, uh, outlook and ideas. We uh, I showed you how you can use the IDE to, um, to, do, to run the tests, to do debugging, to uh, rebuild stuff. Uh, and if you have done all of that and you have a good patch, how do you get your patch uh, to LibreOffice? Well, the first option is, is if, you, if you're totally exhausted by the whole experience, um, you, can <laughs> you can just send a patch and we will uh, take you along. But uh, there are other options which are making it way simpler and better for you, uh, which is you can run a little script, this, this uh, Allogel setup, and that sets, up, uh, sets you up for uh, code review. And then you can push your patch and uh, all the stuff with discussing <coughs> changes to your patch and all that uh, is, is done much more easily via web interface and uh, uh, via email and makes it a lot more easy for you to, to uh, 
to interact with the community. And you only have to do the first thing once and this one uh, once for every test. So what can we improve? As I said, well, maybe we can use more IDEs. Actually, Eclipse would be probably a nice thing to do. Uh, I will try to look into that at some point. Uh, shouldn't be too hard. And uh, the other thing, I, I we have lots of documentation at the doc.libreoffice.org, uh, which shows the Doxygen generated uh, documentation for all the classes in LibreOffice, which is pretty awesome. And it would be cool uh, to maybe have that uh, uh, directly clickable from the IDE. Um, maybe uh, an, an primitive way to do that is to have a Clang plugin that actually just puts the link in front of every class, which would make it uh, obviously uh, available everywhere. But yeah. Um, and of course, the other thing, uh, ARP API is the uh, UNU, so the external API. OpenGrok is the source code browser, so just to have links to those. Yeah, okay, so that's about it. So are there questions on building LibreOffice? Yes, Niklas. Well, <laughs> if, if you, uh, yeah, I, I we, we, I, I didn't, Git clean would be, no, 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 <laughs> Git clean is probably the easiest way. I didn't provide any way to do that. And it probably depends on, I mean, it depends on the, uh, on the EDE, IDE, uh, actually, how, how deeply you are touching the, the source tree. For uh, Visual, Visual Studio, for example, I think we are just generating like top-level files, uh, .crj, a .croj file, which is probably easy to make a clean rule for that. But for uh, kdevelop, we actually generate like in all the directories uh, the include path for that directory, and that's pretty messy. So I assume that was your problem, right? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, one could probably do something, but I didn't yet. So Git clean is the easiest way. Um, in in the in the IDE, you mean? Um, well, that depends how you generate it. In general, uh, the stuff that I did is by module. So you have one specific module, for example. Uh, the text processor, and then you can do editing and stuff there, and can rebuild that thing. Um, but you can also, that is uh, um, what I showed with the test, you can run the test just for writer, but you can also run the test for the whole suite. And you can also do uh, just a rebuild of one module, so just rebuild writer, or you can uh, also trigger complete rebuild. That is completely configurable uh, from the IDE already. So, um, both is possible. Uh, of course, in general, you would you would say I always use the the whole project, but um, that might actually be very slow in certain cases because it's just a huge project. So um, having just a small sub project gives you a lot of performance, uh, especially if you're like low in the in the stack. If you're if you're in the text processor, you're at essentially at the end of the project anyway, so you you include all the other stuff. If you are very in a, in a low level or lower level thing, like uh, <coughs> the stuff that the last two presentations were about, the graphic stuff, um, you have lex less context and less include path uh, to, to care about, so it's, it's a lot quicker already. Does that answer the question? So if uh, on Linux, it's both. You can you have both options. Moggy. Uh, yeah, the how do I generate the the. Yeah, a 
think that's just m uh, make check make make unit check is You can't do that in the stuff that I did. You might be able actually to do that on Windows with the stuff that Onza did because he did uh, he did create targets for every library and uh, stuff uh, like that. So maybe maybe I would have to look into that. I never looked into, although I'm using the eyes and not that other editor, um, <laughs> 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 I uh, haven't actually looked at the IDE integration. So, um, sorry. But uh, yeah, I might have a look at that. Other questions? Okay, thank you very much.